50 could be an exciting time as you get ready to retire. But will you have enough money to support the lifestyle that you want? Chris Hobart, president of Hobart Financial Group in Charlotte, has the steps you need to take to make sure you are ready. Well, we sure do. Good morning. It's great to see you, Chris. Thank you for being here. This really speaks to our audience today, I'm okay. sure. Uh, step number one, the first thing you need to do is really zero in on a retirement date. Right. Hey, you know, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to get to, to that destination if you don't know where you're going. Um, so the main thing that we really have to do, everyone, is make sure that we kind of have that target date in mind. It uh, doesn't mean we have to stick to it, but that allows us to decide what type of assets we need to support ourselves in retirement. It also allows us to look at things like pensions and Social Security to make sure that we're functioning with those in the highest, uh, highest manner. Also do some advanced tax planning as well when we can kind of target in on that date. Okay. But be flexible because stuff can happen, layoffs, uh, yes. and yeah. things like that can, can change things. So you've got to be flexible with that date. And okay. that can change where you're going to live. You should figure that out too, right? Right? You know that's a that's a huge thing. Eighty percent of people stay uh, stay in their house when they when they retire. In other words, they stay in their same same residence. But a lot of times we have to consider: Are you going to move to a smaller house? Move to a retirement community? Uh, the other things to consider is: Do we want to maintain a mortgage? Interest rates are very low right now, which means right now you actually might want to have a mortgage because it's cheap money. Right. On the flip side, do you want to get out of debt? Get away from that. So a lot of things to consider right now, uh, and to and to uh, make sure that you're making the right decisions. Okay. Also, you say don't forget to include medical costs. Especially if you're thinking about retiring a little bit early before 65. At 65, you get Medicare. Now, Medicare is not necessarily free, but it, it's helpful. Um, prior to that, though, that cost is extremely expensive if you have to shoulder that yourself. So if you retire at 62, that medical cost can be extremely high. So you got to be careful with that. Hmm. Talked about mortgage a little bit, but on your overall debt, it's a good idea to have that all nailed down. Uh, you know what? When you retire, as much as possible, get out of debt, be debt free. Mortgage, again, rates are low, but if we're talking about consumer debt or credit, Credit card debt, things like that, before you retire, please, get please, please get out of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, it's trouble. Okay, review your Social Security and pension options. Yeah, you know, a lot of times uh, you, can, you can take your Social Security at age 62, as a lot of folks know, but you get a lower benefit, which that's, that's okay, specifically if you think you're going to live a short amount of time. You want to get as much benefit as possible. But if you're going to be here for a longer time, you really want to think about that twice, because the longer you wait to take your Social Security, the better the benefit. On top of that, there are some benefits between husband and wives that you can actually share some of your benefits and, uh, and increase a, you know, a spousal benefit, which is kind of nice if we think one spouse is going to live, live a, little, a little bit longer. Uh, with your pensions, same thing. A lot of times people don't know that they've got an old pension sitting somehow, somewhere. Uh, make sure you check with some old companies. You might have a pension you didn't know about. Uh, we talked about that, that mm -hmm. a few weeks ago, somebody that had like 300 some odd thousand dollars in a hidden account that they didn't know about. That's it's Can you imagine? Line. I know. I'd like to imagine that one. <laughs> yeah, I would too. We'll find I would that too. For you guys. No. <laughs> he, he can find that for you. Yeah, magic money. Huh? Fifty percent of the time, three hundred thousand yeah. dollars. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> all, right, all right, I don't want to overbuild I'm you. I'm not Bernie Madoff. Come on. <laughs> right. All right, thank you. Uh, stress test for you. You might think, okay, I've got everything lined up, but it's yeah. not a bad idea to do a stress test. Well, you know, especially after we saw 2000, 2001, two, and 2008. A lot of times we, we have these great plans that everyone thinks will carry them through retirement, but we've got to deal with things like inflation, rising interest rates, uh, market volatility, a lot of crazy stuff, a political environment that's changing here shortly or potentially changing shortly. All of this can cause unneeded stress on a retirement. Uh, what we do at our office is we put your, what you have through that stress test. We say, okay, good times, we can do this, mm -hmm. but more importantly, through the bad times, how are you going to survive? You know, when we look at the past decade, a lot of people look back and say, geez, it wasn't that great of a financial decade. Right. That's why you need to stress test. If you stress test and you said, what's the That's worst good. that can happen, yeah. you can begin to correct. You, you don't want to look afterwards and say, boy, how should, how should I have corrected? You want to look beforehand and say, how do I correct? And oh. it's comforting to know, even in the worst of times, I might still be okay. Yeah, exactly. Right. And, and the, the thing is, most individuals, unfortunately, have kind of followed Wall Street's plan. You know, buy a mutual fund, buy a variable annuity, buy high fee stuff, and it, it tends not to actually be best for people in or near retirement. There's, there's better planning for people that, that have reached this stage of life, which is instead of accumulating assets, it's more preservation and then also looking to distribution. Okay, very good. Uh, you say meet with a fee-only financial planner? Yeah, basically meet with a fiduciary for your money. Uh, you know, we've all been sold something before, haven't we? And we realize after we've been sold that somebody made money off of it and it wasn't necessarily in our best interest. 
fee-only planners, we, we take that away from, uh, from folks. Our, our interest isn't necessarily in how much do the planners make, it's in how well we do for you. Uh, so make sure you've got somebody sitting on the same side of the table as you, rather than looking at your pocket saying, geez, how much do I, can I make off these folks? Hmm. And big or small, eventually we will all leave an estate. And you should probably go over those plans a little bit. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, it's important that you've got to have all those answered, especially right now in your 60s. It, you've got clarity in, in everything that you can do, so make sure you're, you're clear with your family. Have that will done. Powers of attorney, it's a good time to have all that taken care of. Also, things like your living will to make sure that, that there's clarity so people know at some point in the future when you can't make those good decisions, they have some guidelines. Very good. Isn't he good? Chris Hobart. To learn more, visit HobartFinancialGroup.com, HobartFinancialGroup.com, or you can call 704-553-0123. Again, the number is 704-553-0123. Chris, thank you. Thank you. Good Thanks to be back. Thanks very much.